folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm your host, the Steampunk Desperado, and this is the place where we talk about the wonderful and fascinating topics of science fiction, fantasy, and history, and the intersection of those, the, the amazing genre of steampunk. Today I'm on my historical kick. I'm talking about a classic American historical novel, uh, The Last of the Mohicans by James Fenimore Cooper published way back in 1826. That's almost 200 years ago. And it remains a classic to this day. Now, it was part of a series that Cooper did, which he called The Leather Stocking Tales. Which, that sounds funny, but I believe that was a Native American metaphor for a high-topped boot, like up on your leg. Uh, they weren't used to seeing those kind of, that kind of clothing made out of leather. And so that's what they called it. The hero of this series of books, and, and Cooper wrote a lot of adventurous type books, but this series, the hero was a, a frontiersman, a trapper called Natty Bumpo. <laughs> he had different nicknames which were a lot cooler than his real name, and in the last of all, Hickens, he's called Hawkeye. Because, of course, because of his keen eyesight and awareness of his surroundings. Now, Hawkeye, for most Americans, you probably think of the movie and TV series MASH about the, the medical corps in the Korean War and how, how uh, Captain Pierce, <laughs> how Captain Pierce's nickname was Hawkeye. Why was it Hawkeye? Because uh, Last of the Mohicans was the only book his father ever read, <laughs> and that's why he called him Hawkeye. It's funny to think of that because it's not the easiest book to read. So if he just picked one book, well, at least he picked a good one, <laughs> let's say. Now, Cooper, i got to talk a little bit about him. He was a fascinating guy with an amazing life. And he was born, you know, way back in the 1700s. And he was enrolled in Yale University at the age of 13. So, obviously a pretty brilliant guy. But he was a troublemaker, at least in his youth. He blew up another, another kid's door. <laughs> and it was, you know, boarding, boarding school, obviously, uh, the dormitory or whatever they had at Yale at the time. So that got him expelled. Another thing, another prank he had recently pulled was locking a donkey in the rec recitation room. So he was not, he was not the best behaved of kids. Definitely creative, though. Uh, later on, he became a midshipman in uh, the Merchant Marine and was. You know, out on the sea doing manly things, and later he joined the U.S. Navy, and he was in the Navy for quite a while. And when he retired from that, he became a writer, and he lived all over the place. He lived in America, lived in Europe, a lot of different places. So had a very, very cool, interesting life. He was politically involved, uh, had a lot of a lot of things to say. Now, going back to the book, uh, the setting of this is what we Americans know as the French and Indian Wars. Because that was back uh, before independence, when we were a series of British colonies, and uh, were fighting with the French, who at the ta at that time ruled Canada to the north. And the Indian part means that they enlisted Native Americans as their mercenaries <laughs> to uh, attack the British colonists. And of course, the, the British did the same thing. And so there were a lot of different tribes involved fighting one another, which is definitely a theme of this book. And uh, so it takes place ar around the 1750s, and uh, at the time that George Washington, later, you know, the founder of our country, the father of our country, he was one of the uh, military leaders in that, and he had, you know, some pretty harrowing experiences uh, fighting the French uh, at that time. So. This is a tale of the frontier, at the time when the frontier was upstate New York. And it involves uh, a, this frontiers, uh, frontiersman, uh, Hawkeye, with his two Native American friends. Uh, Chinchkuk, he was kind of a chief of a band that's almost gone, you know, almost died out, the Mohicans. And uh, his son, Uncas, and, he's a, and they're both very noble, uh, very noble guys. They're, they're, they're brave, they're smart. They're honest, and uh, they are selfless. They are very, definitely willing to uh, fight and die for what they believe in. And, of course, they're really good friends of Hawkeye. 
And what, how it starts is there's a fort uh, up in up in upstate New York near the border with Vermont uh, called um, Fort William, William Henry by the British, and they were besieged by the French. Uh, one of the guys on the British side is Colonel Monroe, and, and uh, his daughters hired this native guide to get them up there to join their father. And this guy Magua, he was a Huron, who was actually, he was he was masquerading as somebody from a friendly tribe, but he wasn't, and so he betrayed them, you know, and tried to take them prisoner, but they end up getting rescued by Hawkeye and his friends, and that includes the daughters and and their teacher, uh, their teacher, um, music teacher David Gamut, who is kind of a foil. He's kind of a, he's very religious, and he's he's kind of a buffoon <laughs> actually, and uh, he provides a lot of the humor in the book. In fact, he can in a lot of places he he sings as a means of defense. I mean, he's thinking that if he's sings well enough that he'll he'll move the enemy to not attack him and in some cases it actually works so anyway so uh, Hawkeye and his friends lead the girls to the fort unfortunately the French besiege them and, and the British surrender and the, and the French say okay well we're gonna let you leave you can go back to New York and we won't attack you and our allies won't attack you but their native allies did not get the memo, and it ends up they end up, ended up, um, you know, trying to loot the dis disarmed troops and civilians leaving, and that the, they fought back and ended up being a horrible massacre, and, and it's like the Fort William Henry massacre, 1757. Look it up; it really did happen. And after that, you know, they, the girls get the girls and uh, their teacher get. Uh, get captured by Magua again, uh, but at the same time, uh, Hawkeye, Chinichgook, and Uncas come to rescue them, uh, along with a young, uh, a young British soldier, Duncan, who is happens to be in love with the other daughter, Alice. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of heroism, a lot of exciting adventure, danger, uh, fighting, uh, fighting and killing, and uh, whites against whites. Natives against natives, and uh, vice versa. So it's uh, got some really good and uh, really good portrayals. A uh, very descriptive of the nature and how beautiful everything is, uh, the wa the wonders of uh, the natural world, and uh, the people in it, the the interesting ways of the natives and uh, their their fascinating cultures. And and interesting enough, there's a lot of words that we associate as tropes. Uh, uh, with the Native American culture and so on that, that came from this book and probably were popularized. Uh, some, some which are considered offensive, like the name of the f uh, former name of the Washington football team, <laughs> which, you know, I mean, what, red, black, we're not really those colors. White, it's, it's, just, it's just a metaphor. But anyway, um, words like pale face, wampum, wigwam, a great spirit for God, uh, Happy Hunting Grounds for the Afterlife, Tomahawk. And these are, these are words from the Algonquin tribes of the eastern U.S. and Canada. The most contentious words are the way that uh, English words, I think the most contentious words in this book are the way that our English words have changed in uh, meaning, and particularly the word savage, because Cooper refers to the, the Indians as savages. Now, that's considered offensive today because our meaning of the word savage is different than it was then. Savage just meant uncivilized. You weren't, you didn't read and write, you weren't Christian, you didn't live in a house. That wasn't so much of a judgment as it is now. So, but in general, I think that, I think that um, Cooper portrays the, the natives in a, in a very positive life. And in this case, the term noble savage is not an oxymoron. I mean, he basically shows them as having a rich culture, that is um, worthy in its own merits. Even the, the um, antagonist, Magua, is not at heart a bad person. I mean, I mean, he basically wants to force Cora to be his wife, but at the same time, you know, that's something from a different culture. He, uh, he gives a speech at one time about, uh, about what the Great Spirit, how he made people different, and he's talking about the whites. And I'm going to quote some of this, because a lot of this really hits home. And, 
The white man's cunning tells him how to get together the goods of the earth, and his arms enclose the land from the shores of the salt water to the islands of the great lake. His gluttony makes him sick. God gave him enough, yet he wants all. Such are the pale faces. And, yeah. you know, that that is kind of true, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, it's it. See this book as being uh, very uh, multi-layered and uh, complex. It's not. It's not just a, you know, an ignorant white person. Uh, looking at uh, looking at these cultures and and denigrating it is really not. And interestingly enough, this book was vastly vastly uh, influential, not only in the United States but also in Europe. I recently read. Uh, I wanted to read a missioner book because because they, you know, he was an interesting writer with a lot of a lot of fact in his fiction. So I read the book Texas. And one of the chapters involved the British, the German, excuse me, the German settlers that came to Texas. There were a lot of them. And uh, a lot of them were inspired by the book The Last of the Mohicans, believe it or not. They would read this book and say, wow, that's so cool being in the forest like a trapper and a, and a hunter and, you know, wearing, wearing leather, you know, wearing basically leather uh, moccasins and stuff like that, creeping around. And uh, so it inspired a lot of young German men to moved to America. At the same time, the princes that ruled their many German states, they were so upset that they were losing their cannon fodder that some of them banned the book. <laughs> uh, and so in the, in, in the Mishnah book, a lot of these guys, they uh, read that book and they snuck out and uh, caught, a, caught a boat to America and, and settled in Texas. So it's interesting how influential that was. It was made into movies. It was a very popular subject for movies. It was made something like, what was it, nine times? Starting in 1911, uh, from different countries, uh, not just America and Canada, but, uh, but Germany and uh, Italy and Romania. And there were two TV series. One was with British and uh, also a film serial way back when. Most recent movie adaptation was uh, was also called Last of the Mohicans, uh, starring Daniel Day Lewis as Hawkeye, uh, 1992. Uh, director Michael Mann won an Oscar for Best Sound, and it was well received. It's doubtful the critics would give it such good acclaim these days, simply because of the wokeness that makes everybody feel obliged to denigrate our history and our culture, which is a very sad thing. And so. I highly recommend that uh, you check out these movies and, uh, and the book, especially, even though it's a little difficult in places, but it's well worth, well worth getting through. As far as my rating, I give it the Steampunk Desperado rating of four and a half out of five gears because it's a really great story. A little difficult, though. At the times, the author was a little too carried away with his flowery prose, so I'll deduct a half a gear for that. So this has been my review of the classic American novel, Last of the Mohicans, by James Fenimore Cooper, published back in 1826. Thanks for bearing with me in this. Please check out the book, check out the movies, and please also like and subscribe, and give me your comments below what you think of it. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.